I've always loved amazing and rare cars that should be perfect that are in derelict condition. And there's just something about barn finds and garage finds and these cars that have been sitting for years that I just think is beyond cool. So to me, the Speedster was always the most beautiful. Cleanest lines, most elegant, no extra weight, no extra fanfare, just simple and pure Porsche. That's why I love the Speedster. It was amazing to find this car. When we acquired it, I was like beside myself. I couldn't believe uh, how lucky we were to, to get this work of art. So this particular car was built July 29th, 1955 and imported through Max Hoffman's dealership in New York. Actually sold out here in California where it spent its whole life. The last owner had it for nearly 50 years. He had already done some customizing to it to upgrade it to make it better on the track. He actually upgraded the engine, so he louvered uh, you know, over the engine, so get that extra air, uh, put a roll bar in there, you know, and just, just you know, some subtle uh, custom features. So the car actually looked really cool as found. So it, it can't be ever restored back to the way it was perfectly because it has the wrong engine, the numbers don't match. The chassis is a 1955, and instead of having a 1500, it has a 1600 SC engine in it. We could restore it back to close to the original, but we could never make it exact to the original. So if I can't make it exact, what can we make it? We can make it exactly what it was meant to be. I tried to put us back into 1955 and said, what would I do if this was Galpin in the 50s and we had Porsche? So it's either gonna be built by hand, customized by hand, or something from that period. And so that's what we're calling it, a period correct custom. What I really wanted to go over is what I'm doing to this before I hand it back. The whole ideology behind customizing is to make the aesthetic better and more pleasing. So you just lose all the parts that hurt your eyes and then you have the right thing. The color is obviously one of the most important things about the car. I didn't want anything metallic or flashy. I wanted something that felt like it was from that period, kind of mid to late 50s, something that would be an appropriate color but at the same time, something unique. He's like, listen, I've got this weird color in my head. All I can think about is a blue green. I had this vision of this color that if you thought it was blue, it was green. And if you thought it was green, it was blue. I sort of went down the, the rabbit hole with a bunch of color samples and dug out things, you know, that's still automotive, but not necessarily used on the outside of a car. And I think between what we found and what we mixed, we came up with something really unique. It's hard to identify what that color is. You know, if you're at a car show, ooh, what's that color? That's what you want people to do, to ask about it. When I was working on the 356 during the viewing, there were a lot of curious people that wanted to actually come in and talk with me and actually see pieces beyond the rope. And everybody was very happy and it was it was a great event so on the engine you know what's beautiful about it not being original is we can do whatever we want with it so the idea is to get as much performance out of that engine as possible and to make it gorgeous and nick is doing an amazing job there I was really inspired by a lot of the amazing Porsche interiors that I've seen over the years. The interiors are so creative, like their Pepita interior on the 901, which actually most people call houndstooth, but it's a beautiful pattern. And they also use plaids or tartans, uh, which is a Scottish uh, a pattern. Actually, that's the inspiration that I drew from. Even though it's kind of like a little bright, it's got this beauty to it that I think is going to blend very well. Anybody, you guys can just go to Cars and Coffee and you guys can shoot cars. So today we're actually here to teach a photo class. 
we selected 10 lucky students to photograph and get their first eyes on this uh, beautiful 356. The point is to really inspire them to push their limits with photography and shoot something different. They blew it out of the water. It's just so pretty and it's so modern. It, it's just a showstopper. I just want to stop and take pictures of it. I love this car. I mean, the car itself is this gorgeous work of art. She's so happy right now. She's happy because she's beautiful again. 